Good afternoon, good evening. Not sure what party on. You guys are on East Coast, so I'm Central Standard Time, but we're going to go ahead and get this started. This is the first part. According to Module 5 Assignment, Uncertainty Management with Certainty Factor Theory, Bayesian Reason. I may have said the wrong, Bayesian or Bayesian, something like that. However, you said. Now, we're going to stem off the assignment information from earlier from Module 2, like it says, recapping uh, from the select rule. And I chose rule number one. And that's dealing with Maslow's chain of command of requirements. And I got a reference down at the bottom there. Let's go ahead and check that out right there. See at the bottom. Okay. Very last one, McLeod S207. Of course, you got that on week two. Now, as per assignment instructions, as it says before, we're going to deal with certainty factor in this particular video. And this is basically part one. Uh, my understanding and, and everything about it, uh, F stands for factor. Let's go and get that down. And then, of course, CF is certainty factor. And what I'm talking about here is right in here, when you start getting to this information, it's the equation and formula. And, of course, biological and physiological needs. Basically, the acronym for that I created was BPN, quotation. And, of course, we're going to talk about air. Okay, and that's going to be the rule, rule number one. So let's go down and take a look, quick look at rule. And this is rule from the module two weeks information. And it basically says biological and physiological BPM air in the environment is high, then the choices to go where it is cool and comfortable environment. So, needless to say, on that, that's the rule we're dealing with. And let's go ahead and start with A. Get the calculations going. Overall, it's basically arithmetic, it's just a formula that we have to use with certain factor theory. And this theory says that A, basically, factor dash CF is that air is 0.6. So the next thing is going down to the next part of the formula, which is if A, then B. Kind of like X and Y, somewhat. But right now, we're just going to stick to the basis of if A, then B. Now, the R stands for rule, which the rule number one is where I get the quotation for that, and we're still with certainty factor. And of course, the air there is 0.9. So here we got 0 0.6 and here we got 0 0.9. So A is 0 0.6, B is 0 0.9. Fairly simple. Hope you're still with me. Going to the next step. Therefore, B. C stands for conclusion on this. So the conclusion of the certain factor or the conclusion of cold or warm air is needed. Basically, what's the question? The answer to that arithmetic problem that we're going to figure out. Now, the formula for deriving the certainty factor of B is as follows. Here's the formula. Certainty factor, I'm sorry, conclusion of cold and warm air is what this means right here. And it's going to equal the top two, which is A and B. So, A times B. B is 0.9 times A, which is 0.6, equals 0.54. We're still within that range of negative 1.0 all the way up to positive 1.0. Keeping it simple and keeping it easy. Going further into this, basically we're going to get into the other information where they want us to kind of toy around and go a little bit more advanced in case you have a situation of the formula derived from, you know, certainty of conclusion. So with C, it's still the same. F is factor. Same thing with D. And they both are BPNs, both are errors. We just got added addition, you know, factors in there. So the first one's going to be 0.5, which is C, Charlie. And then, of course, D for delta is going to be 0.4 on air. Now, it's saying if C, then D, then, of course, we're back, we back at B. In other words, I guess it's saying that it equals B is what I gather from it. And so following along with the plot of everything, how the form is set up, going back to that R, which is rule number one, sticking to that, and it's still 0.9, just like it was up here. So... Going down here, and then therefore B in the end as well, because C, then D, then you have B, and this is the conclusion of cold, warm air is needed again. What is that answer? And let's go down a little further here. The formula for deriving combined certainty of conclusion of B is as follows. And this changed up a little bit of the equation, but it's not really that complicated. Most of us are trained to do vertical math and everything. You know, subtraction, adding, addition, multiplication, and of course, dividing what they did was go horizontal with it, which doesn't change anything. 
you have the CF still search the factor which is on the outside from my understanding PEMDAS is what we're going to use here please excuse my dear and Sally well you have CF1 CF2 CF1 and CF2 are C and D CF1 is C CF2 is D, CF2 is D. and then these actually equals the CF1 plus the CF2 times the 1 minus CF1 that's the form formula for this portion of it okay in all theory if you have that the alligator is eating this side which means this side must be greater than zero and of course CF2 this side and that must be also greater than zero I mean I've got that backwards but that's my elemental on that don't laugh at me but just keep it in mind all right jumping down to the actual layman terms math equation arithmetic uh, we deem that to be 20 right and how we get 0 0.20, which is in the bracket of negative 1.0 and positive 1.0, we get this from multiplying C and D, like it says up here. So these two, this is on the outside here. So CF, which is that. And then, of course, CF1 and CF2 is on the inside. PIM just means parentheses first, then exponents, then multiplication, then division, then adding, then subtracting. So we got to do parentheses first on this. So when we do the parentheses, basically, outside of here, calculates the point 20. And then we go back to it. So point 20 is here. And then we're going to multiply, then we're going to add here what's inside this parentheses. So we have to do, in this case, we have to do the parentheses here first. So let's make sense of this. Parentheses first. So the first parentheses is here. So if I... Go inside the very first parentheses. 1 minus 0.20 gives you a certain number. Let me get my calculator out on the computer and I can tell you what that is off the top of my head. Of course, I'm always using the computer to do that, so bear with me. Let's do that together. You're going to get 1 minus 0.20, and that leaves you 0.8. Okay? Then we jump into the next set of bracket, which is times 30, 0.36. So we're going to times 0.36. That's going to give you 0.288. Now we're done with the brackets, right? Right. All we have left is plus 0.20. So plus 0.20 equals 0 0.488. And, of course, that's how I got the sum on that. And this is the same liking or the same arithmetic equation that was done in the actual example that they show you on the reading. Okay, so when you go into the overview and you read that information, this is what I got that information from. So everything I extracted was from there, and I placed it on here, and that was my total understanding of it, and that's why I believe you believe in us to be able to do that. So I did that. So that's the conclusion of certainty factor theory. My understanding, and it makes sense to me, and I hope it's right, so I'm going to go forward with that. Now moving on to Bayesian reasoning. And of course, on this particular part, I had to go and download that once I downloaded it. Uh, got it started, played with it, and then, of course, went through the tutorial, just like it said, word for word. Wasn't hard at all. Just had to sit down and play with it, and I did so. Oh, no mind this here. I just want my password, but I don't want to give it because it's going to pop up emails every time somebody emails me, so I just keep it on. I haven't figured out how to cut it off. So, as you know, I'm doing this video. I figured out how to do the actual recording video, voice record with the Mac. I had a Mac, but I just never did this before, so this is my... I guess you can say my first year and a half to sit down with it. And I've always been on Windows, so needs to say, I got this part done. And by the way, also on the, on the uh, Bayesian reasoning, I did do it like I did before in the previous assignment, only because I've already done it and I want to go ahead and get this submitted before we're behind. But I did do, notate everything like I normally do with the um, notepad and text information saying, now we're going to start with this and what happened. So, please see the attached video on YouTube that I'm uploading right now and then I'm also going to go ahead and zip them all together including the actual uh, notepad information explaining how I did the Bayesian reasoning for that assignment part and then from there um, that pretty much completes the assignment I'm going to go ahead and cut this video off thank you for watching and look forward to creating more videos for you